It is a privilege for us to come up here and invade your service in that sense, but um, the, the three songs, we picked three that we believe obviously are in tie with this weekend, the celebration, the joy, the, the focusing on the death, but also the blood and the resurrection. So the first song is called The Door to Heaven, and essentially the message, it's self-explanatory, the message, but it's talking about the door to heaven um, is through the Lord Jesus Christ, and I think just the words of it, it has a very unique um, description of it. So I pray it's a blessing. And, um, yeah. Yeah, see if we can.
song that we're going to sing. Um, for years I knew it, it's, it's actually called His Blood Speaks, but I always knew it as Redeemed, that's how I just always remember the song. Um, because it speaks about the blood of Christ and what it speaks for us from the mercy seat. Um, it starts out, starting from the very first time blood was spilt, which was actually, when you consider it, was actually the animals that God killed to clothe Adam and Eve. Yeah. And then it speaks the next time was obviously when Cain shed Abel's blood. So it then walks down through history. So sing this one for you. And I just like I just like the simplicity of the word redeemed. Mm -hmm.
catch my breath now. Uh, if you turn with us to John chapter 19, Luke chapter 24, we're going to be starting in these passages. There's a few things that we're, like, we're going to work our way through, through a few passages today. And um, at first studying a little bit, but just taking, taking in a bit of information. So Lord willing, the final, final point that we get to all ties in. Um, so we're going to, we'll start reading in a moment. Um, before we do, we'll have a word of prayer in a moment, then we'll stand and read together. Um, while we all stand, we'll pray. Then we're going to start in Luke 24. So if you go to Luke 24 first, um, we're going to start in verse 1. <clears throat> And seeing as it's, it's rejoicing about the, the resurrection, which we'll, we'll touch on obviously, and that's that's going to be an underlying theme of, is the resurrection. But um, as we read through, I'll just I'll just keep pointing things out, and hopefully, as we go, we'll build on a thought, build on a thought, and at the end, it'll all tie in. Lord willing, it all makes sense. Yeah. So why don't we open with a word of prayer, and then we'll start reading together. A little bit of reading this morning through the Bible. There's nothing wrong with reading through the Bible on a Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. All right, let's bow our heads and we'll pray together. Father in heaven, we do thank you for today. Lord, we do thank you for Sunday, but we thank you for Resurrection Sunday. We thank you that, uh, Lord, through the, through the many years, right back from when you promised Adam and Eve there would be a seed, there would be a redeemer, that you have kept your word, that through the years, uh, all, the different, all the different things that you taught through the Israelites and those who were not um, the chosen seed, Lord, you taught many principles and thoughts that all pointed to you, to your son. And we thank you, Lord, that it all culminated in salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just ask that you'd give clarity this morning, clarity of thought. I pray you'd give everyone um, what it is they need to know at this time, Lord. And, um, and everyone here is at a different place in life, a different season. I just ask that you be with each one and that you would touch each one where they're at and give them something to ponder on, something to be able to apply this week. We thank you, Lord, and we pray this in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start Luke 24. We're going to read from verse 1 and down to verse 12. So a little bit here. And then we're going to flick over to John. We're going to spend a bit of time in John 19 and then in, in a couple of chapters following. And just make comments through. And then we're going to get into the meat of it, Lord willing. All right, so Luke 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came up unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces down, bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And as their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that point, which was to come to pass. All right, you may be seated now. We will come back and continue on from there, but um, I, had, I had it commented to me twice this morning that if, if I didn't have the message for this morning, I wasn't going to get it sitting there at the back. <laughs> and ironically, I did get the last passage right there whilst I was sitting at the back. So... I won't comment further. But anyway, um, <laughs> if we flick over to John chapter 19, we're going we're gonna to go through a few passages now. We're going to read a bit. It is going to be a lot of scripture reading this morning and hopefully painting a bit of a picture. And we're just going to note some key phrases, some key things about it. And in that passage we just read, there's twice they were instructed and it, it's noted that they were to remember. All right. They remember what Jesus said. And they remembered what Jesus said. So just keep that, that, that pondering in your mind for a few minutes as we continue on. So John chapter 19, we're gonna, we'll, read through, we'll read through this down to verse 37, 31 to 37, sorry. 
and I just want to note, just set the scene a little bit before he dies. Just make a couple of comments, and then we'll move on to four situations. Technically five, but four situations where Christ uh, spoke something or did something for these people. All right. So, John chapter nineteen, verse thirty-one. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation. So remember, this is as we believe the the Wednesday before uh, the the high day begins, because it was the preparation. The, that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that the legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. And that's traditionally to obviously quicken the death of the perpetrators so that they can then remove them. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he saw that it bear and he that saw it, sorry, bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Okay, so just taking those few verses there, I want to pull a couple of things out. So when they came, verse thirty two, they came and without question, they break the legs of the first and of the other. They, they, there was, there's no comment of them perplexing about it or pondering about it or trying to check if they, they, they knew obviously it had to be done, so they just did it. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already. They break not his legs. And every time I read that, I just think of how, how powerful prophecy is. Yes. That it, it was, as it says in verse 36, a bone of him shall not be broken. That's a very key thing. Sometimes we gloss over things like that, but that statement is just another thing showing how powerful God's prophecy is and how powerful the word of God is that those little things, the, the things that we sometimes neglect, it's very key that that happened. And then verse 34, he pierced his side. And you almost think it was uh, him, I guess, double checking, you know, just confirming that they didn't come back later and get in trouble. But it's actually for further on as well, when they're accused of stealing the body out, is making sure no he was because when the, when the blood and water pours out that's a biological reaction in, in death right that's something i learned at, at the hospital when i worked there for a while is is there's a separation of the elements within the blood and you see that separation and the reason the bible puts that in there is not to be gory or just un, unnecessarily graphic it's to remind us that this was a very real death it was very obvious and on top of that, verse 36, there's a point made for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. But sorry, 35, and he saw that it, he that saw it bear record. So this is John talking, he that saw it bear record. And his record is true. He's saying this is not second, third or fourth hand information. I saw this happen. He was the disciples stood there looking at Christ when he died. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. He's saying I was given this task of seeing this happen and witnessing this so that I could then bear witness firsthand so that you can then believe that this is true. All right. Now all this is leading up to verse 38, Joseph Arimathea, he takes the body of Christ and, and they take it to the, the tomb and we know the events had unfolded, that it was sealed by the soldier, the, the seal of um, Pilate, I believe. It was sealed, the, to the stone was rolled away, he comes out of the grave and then starts the stories about seeing Jesus again. All right? And that's what I want to focus on the next three or four events um, where people witness Christ or, or see Christ again. So chapter 20, flick over to verse 11. So just should be the next page in your Bible. We're going to see the first instance where Jesus reveals himself. And as we go through, I want us to focus on a key thing that Jesus does for each person or a key action. Right? There's something he does for each situation, and some of them are similar, but some of them are different. Right? There's, there's the very similar themes through it all, but either way you go about it, he's done something specific for each person. All right? So verse 11, we see Mary stood without the sepulchre. Verse 12, she sees two angels sitting. They say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? In verse 13, and she says, because they've taken away my Lord. She's, she's still of the mindset someone has taken the body of Christ and, and removed it. She doesn't have anything else to go on. And when she had thus said in verse 14, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. 
And verse 15 says it's, she supposed him to be the gardener. But Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Now, at that moment, she's supposed him to be the gardener. She doesn't, it doesn't click who he is. We go, well, wouldn't she recognize him? But we understand his visage was not the same as before he, he died. He had a different appearance. Verse 16, we see Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. So Jesus' action was to simply call her by name. He simply said her name. Now we go, oh yeah, wouldn't, if someone knew your name, you'd assume they know it. But why, why would she assume it was Jesus just because they knew her name? There was something about the way that he said Mary. Something that she knew, hang on, she remembered the first time. Or she remembered the many times since in all the teachings and the days spent traveling. He said Mary. All right. Let's flick over to verse 19, just further down to verse 19. Okay, continue, the story continues on, but now we see someone else. It says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, out of fear, we know, where the, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, we don't see the reaction of the disciples yet, but it goes on to say, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. You can imagine if you're in a room and everything's shut up and all of a sudden another person's in the room. Yeah. All right? That's not normal, normally a, uh, a comforting sight or a comforting experience. But we see he firstly says, peace be unto you. It's okay. If, if someone just popped up in the room and they said, peace be unto you, you'd sort of go, I don't know. You can take it or leave it. But he then showed his hands and his side. He said and demonstrates to them this, this, who else do you know who has this? Yeah. Right? That's a very graphic but very real thing. His action showed the proof of who he was to them. This is them remembering who he is. Peace be unto you. May have, maybe some of them went, oh, he, he, he spoke peace to the storm. But that final, that little, just that little trigger that goes, no, that's, that's, there's no one else. Like, that's him. Right. We know that the other, the other guys had their legs broken and he's not showing us his legs. We know that he was the only one with the spear in his side. Right. It, was, it was a proof. All right. But then there was one missing, remember? So down to verse 34, uh, 24, sorry, we see that Thomas, he doubts as we call him. We always call him Doubting Thomas and, and if you want to, you can. But it says he was not with them. And then he says, he makes a statement, except I see his hands, see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. So Thomas was obviously very, very real in his uh, belief and is very practical. Um, after eight days, right, we see eight days later, again, his disciples were with him. So we remember they're locked in because they're still fearing the Jews. And Thomas was with them again. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. It's sort of saying again this was not just he just didn't knock and then walk in okay how you are he stood in the midst and said again peace be unto you but then he turns to thomas now we know he already said spoke peace to them and demonstrated with the the wounds who he was but now he's going to be very specific with his actions towards thomas he turns to thomas and says what only he would know when he wasn't present when thomas was speaking he says reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing he's very specific in his words he's using the same words that thomas used yeah, that's right. he didn't he didn't stutter or he didn't make up some oh do you want to come over and have a look no he was actually you said you want to put your finger in my hands he said you want to thrust your hand in my side he's very specific with how he said it All right he was he was being specific to thomas in dealing with thomas's own you know i guess faithlessness and, and lack of belief Let's move along to another situation, right? So we see actions so far. It's been, action has been specific to Mary. He's, he spoke to her in a way that she remembered. He spoke to the disciples and showed them in a way that they would remember. He spoke to Thomas. He remembered his own words. He spoke to Thomas. Let's go down to ver chapter 21. From verse 1, there's, there's seven disciples in this next little passage. From verse 1 to 14, he speaks to these disciples who decided to go off a fishing. Um, and it says in verse 1, Jesus showed himself again 
And then it says, and on this wise showed he himself. So this next little passage is going to be a description of how Jesus showed himself. It's not just a little story about, oh, they saw Jesus. It's, he's, they're purposely teaching us something through how he did it on this wise. So we see they go fishing. They don't get anything all night long. Verse four, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shores, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Okay, I'm sure there's always people on the shore. I'm sure there's something, you know, it's, it's, it's got a little villages all around. There's people always walking along, maybe other people fishing from the shore. Then Jesus saith unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. So there's no trigger. There's no remembrance triggered. It's just someone speaking. Hey, do you, did you get anything? And, and he said unto them, that they answered no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. That's a very specific and a call to remembrance because they cast therefore. Now, I always wondered why would you just do what someone on the shore had told you? I just always, that always rolls through my head. Someone comes and says, just cast it on that side. And you're like, why? Like that's the first thing, you go, why would you want me to do that? Like I've been here all night long, got nothing, but something in their minds said, okay, let's just do it. All right. And then it says that they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Now, that's not the first time it's happened, right? This is a call to remembrance. There's something, an action here, where there's a proof in who Christ is and there's a proof in the power of his word. And instantly, verse seven, therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. So the first person that clicked with was the one that used to lay his head on Jesus' chest and, and be alongside it. That was the first person to go, hang on, this, this, isn't, this isn't an unusual occurrence. Well, it would be for the average person, it's not for them. And when Simon Peter hears, he then responds. And they get to shore, Jesus, in verse 12, Jesus saith unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Right? No one needed to ask the question. No, mm. one, no one said, oh, can I see your hands? No one said, can I see your side? It was, it was obvious. It was already there. It was very clear because he did something and called to remembrance past, past actions. Verse 13, it's noted that Jesus then cometh, taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. Again, that's not the first time he did that. And then we see in verse 14, now this is the third time that Jesus showeth him, showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. All right, well, let's flick back to Luke 24 now. We're going to go back to Luke and finish here as far as the readings. So we see that Jesus, in each situation, there was an action that he performed to recall to remembrance. Mary, he spoke her name. He spoke to her in a way or in, in, in knowing something. Maybe it was the name he gave her. Who, who knows? Like we, it may have been that he named her Mary. Maybe something along those lines. But then he speaks to the disciples in the room. He says peace, but then he shows them who he is. He demonstrates who he is. Thomas, he was very specific with addressing Thomas's own uh, I guess extreme desires to you know, stick his finger in someone's wound and thrust the hand in his side. He obviously assumed there was not going to be any pain from that, but he assumed that was the right thing to, to say. But he addressed that. And then he again did something from the seashore, which he had done before, which prompted their memories to go, hang on, this is, this is the Christ. He's, yeah. This is not new. His actions of old are still the actions of now. The things that he's done in the past, he's still doing now. Right? There's, there's, these things are continual. Now, verse 13, we just we stopped at verse 12, but going on from verse 13 to Luke 24, we now see the account where he decides to go for a walk with these two, two disciples. And two of them that same day, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So there are two men just walking along, and it came to pass while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So they're just walking along and who knows, I, I don't think it would have just been a desolate road. It would have been probably a bit strange if a third person showed up, they might've been a bit more awkward, but there's probably travelers like you're passing and, and it wasn't unusual for someone to sort of draw up near and go past. It might've been the pace they were at. They were just sort of strolling. They weren't rushing or who knows, but he draws near to them because I don't think he doesn't poof and was there because that would have made alarm bells. But their eyes were holden, in verse 16, that they should not know him. 
right? So at the moment, there's no, there's no action to reveal anything to them. And, and he then asks, what manner of communications? You know, what, what are you talking about? What, what, do you, what do you got? You're seeing, maybe they look deep in the thought and they looked really like they're really, most people walking along and probably just enjoying the scenery or just chatting about whatever, whatever work. But he's like, as you walk, you're sad, like your countenance, you're sad. Something's very deep and meaningful going on here. And then one of them explains, this is what happened. Uh, you know, so are, are you a stranger and you don't know what's been going on the last few days? And verse 19, he said unto them, what things? So he, he prompts them, okay, you, you explain it. Tell me where you are. Explain to me where you are. So they go through and explain um, all that's happened. Jesus, the chief priest, delivered into death. The certain women, um, they, they told us these stories that made us astonished. Um, they couldn't find his body. And they, they said they saw angels as well. And, and, and some of them said, they found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. So they're saying, we haven't witnessed any of these things. We've heard these stories. We've heard these accounts. We haven't seen anything. And then he, we remember his, their eyes are holding, but verse 25, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And that's a very in your face statement when you think about it like it's 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 really in your face but their eyes were still not open their, their eyes aren't they, they did nothing clicked yet and then he continued at beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded now that alone you would think wouldn't that him knowing so much all those scriptures he starts at moses and he starts talking about the prophets and he starts and wouldn't they go hang on are you what are you are you but it didn't they just they just i don't know they just kept walking and listening and kept taking all in they didn't pick up on anything at all. And they drew nigh unto the village in verse 28, whether they went, and he made as though he would go on further. So he's like, I'm going to keep going. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the, the chat and the opportunity to tell you things. But they constrained him. And verse 30, it, com it came to pass as he sat at me, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened that they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Now, for me, like it says, their eyes were opened. It's almost as if that moment when he took the bread and they could see his hands visible and see the scars in his hands, that they went, hang on, we've seen someone break bread that way before. That was a unique thing that they broke bread, but then they saw the scars and they went, hang on, this is Jesus. Because it continues on. They said to him, did not our heart burn within us? He's, he's telling us things, but there's something there. We just couldn't quite figure out what it was. They got up the same hour. They'd been walking all day. Then they get up and they walk back that night, I'm assuming, because they told him not to keep going into the evening. And they walk back. They returned to Jerusalem, found the 11. The Lord is risen indeed, they said. The proof, the action that we saw when he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them, that action triggered our memory of Christ, how he used to break bread and give it to us, maybe the manner in which he said it as he broke it. It triggered an action as a proof, a proof of the Christ in his action. So in, re in recapping, just going up to Mary Magdalene, he spoke a name to her. The disciples in the locker room, he appeared, spoke peace, and then he showed his wounds to, to the proof of who he was. And Thomas, he was very specific with Thomas. He appeared unto those seven on the shore and he, and he did something that he had done previously. His action was just revisiting, I guess, the miracle and the provision that he had given before. And then with those two, he spent a whole day with them, but he chose that moment to reveal who he was by that specific action. Right. Some, of these, some of these people in these situations, we think you've got Mary, you have the, the 11 in the room, the disciples in that room, the 11 that were left, and maybe a few others in that room. You have the seven that were out fishing. You have those two. Thomas specifically was, was um, mentioned by name, as in the Bible wanted to use him as an example, I think. Um, not negatively, but just as an example. Some were originally called by their name. This is what it seems to be. Some they were called by a name. We know that some just like they're sitting far up. I knew you before, when you're sitting under the tree before you even knew about me and what was going on. I knew you, and you were thinking about this. And and uh, verse Luke twenty four verse um, verse six. Sorry. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. They were prompted to remember. 
remember the actions, the words, the things that he had said, the things that he had done, the things that he had taught you prior. Revisit them. Right? Remember how he spake unto you. It didn't say necessarily what he spake, but how he spake unto you. Yeah. There's a way, there's a how that God, Christ speaks to our hearts. It's not always in the what. It's, it's the tone. Like Mary is not a unique name and it's not a unique Probably, probably wasn't said in some weird, strange way either. But it was how he spoke to her. It was how he addressed her. And verse eight, and they remembered his words. The thought, the thought that I want us to think on today is, we see an evidence of them recognizing Christ in their lives by the calling of their name or the speaking of peace to them and the, in the illustration of his scars. The breaking of the bread, so that the fellowship, the time, the fellowship, but also of, of I'm, I'm guessing he was, he was asking the Lord to bless the bread and, and break it all in the one action. It wasn't sort of over five or ten minutes. I'm sure it was a, an intentional act, which maybe they didn't do in that household. Maybe it wasn't something that they'd seen anyone else do, but it was specific to Jesus, the way in which he did it. So we know the preciousness of the blood of Christ this week as we think of Easter, we think of his... his crucifixion we think of the blood being being poured out we know the glory of the power of his resurrection we know that the the miracle that is that he of his own power rose from the dead this was not someone dragging him out and pumping him you know giving him cpr this was his own power okay this is that's very very clear but have we of late listened to his specific personal call to us have we looked for his hand and, and the proof of his hands in our lives, the proof of his uh, provision, the proof of his actions or care yeah, and concern. Good, yeah. Have we to- taken notice of how he works? Have we taken notice of how his voice sounds? Do we recognize it? You know, the, it talks about the sheep hear my voice and I'm known of them. Do we recognize his hands when they're working in our lives? Do we, do we recognize his calling? Do we recognize his leading, his teaching? Um, whilst Easter is a reminder of many things, we know that there's the betrayal of Christ, the trial, the passion of the Christ, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, but then the revealing of Christ to each and every person after that. Mm-hmm. Have we each experienced that, first yeah, of all? The revealing of him as a saviour in our lives, the revealing of his power being able to work in us. Have you had Christ call your name lately? Have you... Have you simply been regarding him as the gardener and not paying attention mm. and not listening when he calls you out individually? Have you had Christ speak a peace into your life and you're choosing not to take that and yet he then shows you his hands and then you know it's him but you're still not allowing that peace to enter into your life? Have you had, have you had Christ teaching you about who he is and the power that he has to offer you and you simply didn't want to recognize it because you weren't remembering the things that he's done in the past. Yes. You know, we consider, um, we come back, Luke 24, verse 6. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. When you think about that, that instruction, it's a very simple, it's very simple for us to apply. Like, remember, it's, it's, we're, not, we're not being asked to go out and sacrifice something amazing, something, not, we're not asked to go out and do some great works, do some, uh, some tiring, tiring activity. You simply are saying, remember how he spoke unto you. Because they were seeking. You look and they're afraid, they're bad on their faces after they saw, they're looking for the stone that, but he says, just remember. And he said, he said that he's gonna, this is gonna happen. It's not, it's not, a mystery it's not strange it's not something that was hidden to you just remember what he already told you remember the things that he'd already spoken the lessons remember the manner in which he spoke to you remember the, the breaking of the bread which he did on multiple occasions it, I'm sure every time they sat down for a meal Jesus was breaking the bread that's that's mentioned a few times but even the specific times of the loaves and fishes mm. think of it wasn't just breaking of bread but it was the multiplication it was the the giving to so many people right it wasn't new to them. He was saying, remember something that you've already been given. Remember something you've already been taught. Um, 
Easter, Easter can come and go quite easily and be focused on as a holiday. It can be focused on as a time to just chill out, get away. It, it's, most people look at it and go, great, no work. That's, that's what a majority of people, especially in Australia, we love our long weekends. But we focus on that and we don't pause to remember what it was that gave us the, the, the opportunity to remember. The, it, I find it hilarious how the world uses it because it makes the money. Let's be honest, Easter weekend is a, is a good yeah. money maker for a culture like Australia. Many cultures around the world do not celebrate Easter because they just adamantly won't because it's not entirely with their culture, no, with their religion. But in, with all the talk that goes on currently in social media and, and people can't say this, can't say that, they'll still run Easter on the weekend because it makes them money. That's the bottom line. But it's an opportunity for us to remember. Amen. And not to, not to neglect that. It's an opportunity for us to sit down and consider why did, why, did, why did this even come up? And we can argue about all the specifics, you know, he died on a Wednesday night or Friday. You, you know, talk about the word Easter and when it started and the holiday and all the paganism, all that stuff. That's great. But take it as an opportunity. Don't neglect that opportunity to remember, to sit down and, and recall the things that Christ has done specifically for you. Obviously, the blood that he shed for the whole world is the first and foremost thing. But remember the things that he said to you, the things he taught to you. The, the, the manner in which he does it is unique. Yes. Right? His sheep know his voice because his voice is unique. It's not like the other voices of the world. The other voices that shout out and try and grab the attention. It's unique. Right? So if there's anything today that I'd like you to take to ponder, if there's something else that's not that, that's great. But just remembering. It's, it's, um, we set aside a day of the year to remember the fallen soldiers, those who have sacrificed. It's Remembrance Day. But for Christians, every single day is a remembrance day yes. because Amen. we're getting to get up each morning and remember his mercies are new every day. Yes. And we get to stop and consider, why am I here? Why have I been given this opportunity? Why do I have the job I have? Why do I have the family I have? Why do I have anything that I have? And at the end of the day, it's because Christ wants you to do something. Right? And he's speaking to you through it. But let's just look for how he's speaking. What, what is it? What is Let's remember what he said. Let's remember what he said from the very beginning. All right, let's, let's bow our heads. We'll close in a word of prayer. There's no true invitation, um, but if the pastor wants to take one, that's fine. But we'll just close in a word of prayer and I'll hand back over to Pastor Stevenson. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the, the description of your word. It's, it's very clear. It's concise. Nothing is wasted. Nothing is left hanging nothing is nothing is left there with us wondering about what what might have been you always give us everything we need to know and i pray lord that as we go through this next couple of days of the easter weekend wrapping up that we would spend time just thinking upon you thinking upon your goodness on your grace and mercy to each of us lord where none of us are where we should be or where we deserve to be we thank you for that lord none of us have earned what we have None of us are worthy of what we have. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you have given us the victory through your blood. We thank you that you have given us power to become the sons of God. And we just ask that we would live in light of that, that we would seek to be used of you and that we would, um, Lord, remember your voice in each and everything that we, we face. We love you, Lord. We pray that you would watch over each person today. Those who are not well, ask you hand a blessing upon them. Think of those who are away, give them traveling safety, give them a good time of rest and rejuvenation. And we just ask that you would bring this congregation back together again, glorifying your name soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.